Welcome to Target Lock TV. This is the finals of uh, Swedish Open tournament online X Wing. And uh, with me today, I have Max Brook. Welcome, Max. Hello, thanks again for having me on. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. We have a. Uh, well, two Swedes in the final. Who would have thought that? Very See. fitting. <laughs> We got Nicholas God and we got Joan Bicinius. We just saw him uh, just a few minutes ago playing on the stream. And um, yeah, Max, would you like to, to read out? Maybe you should start with Nicholas's list. Definitely. And let's see. Uh, Nicholas is uh, blue or red. Sorry. I... Uh, yeah, Nicholas yeah, is he's blue. Got Nicholas's name. Perfect. Blue. 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 Yeah. All right. This, one's, this is going to be a very fast uh, list to read out. We've got uh, five times Inquisitors with Foresight. Lovely. And their players start at the time, so we started here as well. And Johans is playing um, General Grievous uh, with Treacherous, Impervian Plating, Soulless One, and uh, Berber Cret uh, with uh, Gravitic Deflection and Treacherous. He's also playing Sam Weasel with uh, Treacherous, Count Dooku, Thermal Detonators, Slay One Title, and Boba Fett. And we see here that Nicholas is uh, doing a fast move for an engagement. And Joan is taking. running away a bit and uh, wants to engage on his own terms yeah well that I mean that makes sense obviously he's not gonna want to joust those inquisitors with foresight <laughs> um, but what I think is really interesting here is that we've got really two lists that show two different sides of X-Wing right we've got a, a list of uh, you know generics with minimized upgrades flying in a formation swarm, and we've got a list of specialist pieces with a whole bunch of upgrades and synergies. Um, uh, it's obviously like, you know, Burr kret has got that stack of treacherous and gravitic deflection, Grievous is uh, stacked up defensively as well, and then, you know, Dooku is a pretty excellent, just sort of like another layer on that defense. So we've got three pieces that all kind of support each other in that way. Yeah, Sam didn't... Oh, yeah, here comes the boost. Oh, he might get out of the arcs. He's still caught by uh, one Inquisitor. Well, even, uh, you know, even with a force mod backing it up, I, I think a range... Well, Dice. you never know. <laughs> yeah, dice in the box, so he had to re-roll them. Ooh, bummer. Here we go, so that's one hit, and that's forced out. And then the Sam trigger, or is, has he, he didn't put this card? I'm late to the parties. But yeah, that... welcome, Flipster. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, did he miss his Sam trigger? I think he did. Is that an option? I don't think uh, it is. Let's see. When do you reveal? When do you? Okay. During setup, you drop the condition, face down. I don't actually see the condition out at the moment. Is it out uh, somewhere? Am I missing it? Yeah. He's flipping it now. He yep. had. <laughs> he had three hands pinging on the <laughs> cards. That's what you get when you have a judge. Looking down. I, oh. One of the. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm done. I was just going to say one of the really interesting things that it's going to be interesting to deal with with live tournaments when they come back after the pandemic mm -hmm. um, is, you know, like the question of rules calls from the stream, right? That was something really interesting that I know organized play had to deal with and we had to deal with in general. Because mm -hmm. the trouble is, you know, like you see some things when you're looking at the table, but when there are 500 people looking, you. you you're gonna get more data, right? And so, like, how does it when 
some people and then of course people on the stream can like replay and look at things and such and so <laughs> it was a really interesting question um of like what where to land on that and how to deal with that you know hmm. adjudication calls coming off of the stream and all that yeah i do remember a certain moment on the gold squadron podcast uh, channel uh, <clears throat> defining this uh, <laughs> i mean when I, my my, uh, my controversial stance is I think there's a decent argument that in the same way that like certain sports, you know, only go to the playback if it is like really contentious, mm -hmm. you know, it should, there should be like a certain threshold you have to cross, it, it has to cross to like rewind things too much. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's hard to know where to draw that line. It's an interesting question for TOs. I think in this case where where there is a, a must uh, trigger happening in the, and we're watching it. And I'm also oh. your chair, so it, it, that's pretty <clears throat> Oh, it's easy, it's easy when we're all on stream, I agree. It's just hard when some people are on stream and some people are in person. Mm. Yeah. Um, when we're all on stream, that's no problem, yeah. Um, and, and when you're all in person, it's kind of no problem too. Um, <laughs> it's just when you have the stream audience who sort of has more data than the actual judge. Yeah. It seems like they've deleted the target lock bag here. Mm -hmm. Do we have something we can... Yeah, we can copy this one. Let's grab that one. <laughs> They're writing a message to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I love it. It's like ghost <laughs> writing on the wall. <laughs> Johan usually does that when he's playing the stream. <laughs> Nicholas is evil. Yeah, <laughs> I can't change that. Let's see. Was it? Do they need some a token or something to uh, act as a uh, target lock? There we go. Plenty. I had to step up for a second. My uh, dog decided to put a hole in a tarp we have outside, and I had to go stop that. <laughs> Don't worry. It sounds like a good choice. Oh, I didn't make it quite in time to save the tarp, but it's okay. It was a <laughs> cheap <laughs> I'm going to make them some, some target locks. Shall we uh, pause the timer? Yeah, do that. Yeah, we're running the final at <clears throat> of uh, 75 minutes today. Uh, my experience is that um, the online games, they go a little bit quicker anyway. You get a few more rounds out of them and uh, you save quite a lot of time uh, not having, having to do the measuring and oh, the yeah. art checking. Well, to say nothing of save judges calls. Yeah, and bumping. <laughs> well, you know, whenever I judge an event, 90% of the calls I took were like, is this an arc? Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, the swarm descends on Zam. Mm-hmm. But Sam has a little bit of an... Adv well, she's she's moving lost, basically, so yes. um, she will get oh, out yeah. of there. Jacob is saying, Niklas ain't evil, just effective, ruthless and, okay, a little bit evil. <laughs> <laughs> so, time is back on. There we go. 
I think they got everything they need now. All right, so we see the uh, the trap closing. Now we'll just have to see if it works. Yeah. <clears throat> So, Burr's got a shot here. One hit. And that's easily evaded. Sam's got a... Range 3 shot on green Inquisitor. It's an average. Let's see. It's uh, using that. Dooku. Was that the Dooku? Yeah. And. Uh, and the uh, slave one. And then there's a the force. But well, that's evaded. So there is a revenge shot. Sam, that's one hit. And that's evaded as well. <clears throat> So Grievous is coming around, trying to get a flank for this round, or this coming round. Sam reveals you better mean business. Yes. So there's a bonus attack. Ah. Against the yellow. Or maybe he's... Bonus attack has to be against the one who attacked, right? Yeah. Is it yellow who attacked or green? I think there was green. I think that void is yellow actually, but he still has the choice of. Yeah, he decides not to attack with green, I think. Ah. Hard because... to tell, but it it would make sense if if he decides to. Uh, delay his use of the double attack for yeah. the one that had already spent his force and then uh, that he had the target lock on. That's true. Yeah, that's one of the neat things about Zam is that Zam presents a lot of threats to your opponent, which, you know, means basically forcing them into two bad options. <laughs> mm. I think in this case, you have a range three, two dice attack against Sam, and in in return you get three dice with a target lock. It's probably a good oh, yeah. idea to not attack. You definitely want to not attack, but that's that's a a nice feature of Zam to be able to you know put that rattlesnake down and and threaten that attack. Often you see the Sam. Sam triggers as, as just a bonus, and not so often you see that kind of mind game uh, thing. So it's it's cool to see that it uh, actually being being in uh, in play here. Mm. Well, and that is the sort of thing I would expect to see a top table of an event. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So uh, Niklas has <clears throat> gotten five target locks on Sam here, uh, setting up a potential good uh, engagement. What do you think uh, Sam will, will do here now? Well, to be honest, I think Sam is going to try to run away. And uh, I think Johan is going to try to get some flank shots in. Trying to keep yep. the distance and not taking shots from all of the Inquisitors. 
I think that debris in the corner actually, if he, he moves forward, he will land on it. Yeah. Um, if he moves fast, it looks like it, it would. So I'm not sure what's the best option here is. If it turns in, then he, he doesn't get a shot and, and only presents a lot of opportunities. I mean, he could... Oh, yeah. Niklas is changing his uh, route to uh, try to intercept uh, Grievous, I guess. Well, that makes sense. He doesn't want Grievous to roll in on his back because those... As, as tough as they are at range 3, those things can fold like paper if you uh, roll badly at range 1. Yeah. Interesting. So the target locks were at least partially a bluff. Save them for later, yep. I guess Burger Kit can possibly land in one of these one of these bullseye arcs and Grievous as well. Many arcs on him. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, you know, fact to bring up as well that Foresight is one of those cards that kind of advantages lower initiative. <laughs> there we go. There is. <clears throat> At least one uh, Foresight shot. One hit. That's a damage. Um, yeah. Blink. Don't forget to uh, take an action. Action. I think he's looking at the uh, different, ah. the other bullseyes as well. Ah, good. I hear you always uh, call Sam for Sam Weasel. Is that uh, by intention, uh, Simon? Nope. <laughs> it's it's just to please everyone listening. I see. <laughs> He's uh, really good at sneaking away like a weasel. So we'll see a barrel roll here from uh, Grievous. Hmm. Doesn't it just give them bullseye attacks? I yeah. believe force <clears throat> triggers after it executes a maneuver. Yeah, but he can use. Um... Yes, he can use foresight to chuck out the dice if he wants. For yeah, those and, and... shots, it might. Then uh, he will lose the, the range die. That's true. And, um, and he can mod for free. For free yes. and keep the. This is where I would roll all double focuses on those, though. <laughs> <laughs> but one time. Yeah. It so, looks like uh, <clears throat> Brewer has a bullseye on, on the green one here. Yeah. Who's the first player? I guess this is the timing issue in the with the Joan is uh, first player. Yeah, so he can he can tractor himself out of the bullseye if he he likes. Right. Grievous uh, did a barrel roll as an action. Oh, okay. Just uh, answering the chat here. The thermal detonator. I think this is looking very good for the <clears throat> separatists right now. They did he Bullseye. not decide to spend uh, the foresight on the green? I guess. 
Save the force for defense. Nice out of the box here. So that's two hits. Or is he spending the focus? No. One hit. And that's evaded. Sam on green uh, Inquisitor. Sam turns in here. Bring that force. Two. Target lock, yeah. <laughs> Same result. <laughs> Sometimes. And he rolls one of eight, spends the fours, yeah. Spends the eight. Spends the eight, yeah. Thought that was a focus. <laughs> Let's see. Grievous. Range three on blue. That's it. Crit. Mm -hmm. Blue spends the force for two evades. No damage on the Inquisitors this round? Nope. It was a really nice collapse, but I just couldn't crack those green today. Range 3 obstructed. Into Berber crit. There you go, two hits. But uh, denying the use of those foresight attacks was pretty good with Grievous. Yeah. He spends. This is. This is good. He, sp he forces him to spend the focus token. I mean, that's the best you can get from from a two dice attack at range three through obstruction. <laughs> yeah. I think getting to spend the focus is quite good. So here you got the foresight. And it's, it's... Conver converting that. Mm -hmm. And double evade. Who needs mods? <laughs> <laughs> this is a range three attack primary. Yep. Two hits. Mm -hmm. Gets the range three bonus dice. Right? Yeah. Yep. Takes two. Yep. That's one shield, one hull. This you have a chance to kill the pink here, so I think at least yeah. take some serious damage into her. What's the correct pronunciation of Brewer Crit, uh, Max? Uh, given that I made up the name, uh, Brewer Crit. Okay, cool. So you got it right. <laughs> but if you go by the internet, I think it's Brewer Kurt or something. Or at least the autocorrect on people's phones. How about Sam Weasel? Oh. 
I think that one is uh, Zam, right? Because we hear that name yeah. in the movies. Yeah. Go. Oh, let's see. So this is uh, range one range into one. the Nantex. Oh, Ow. nothing. Oh, uh, can spend that uh, force for one. Yeah. It doesn't even bother. Oh, it was on Sam. Ah. Right. So Sam recharges one uh, charge and... Talk no, that was oh. end of... Uh, it was on pink. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that was... Yeah, that must have been that would be a very weird choice to go after Zam there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I just thought it was very strange not to spend the force there. <laughs> on yeah. The and, that was odd. Yeah. But that's absolutely something that's in his power to do <laughs> by himself, so... Well, this is gonna be a uh, turn of contending with rocks yeah, yeah it's a little bit weird this position for for uh, for Niklas and uh, you know no gas clouds out here so no no easy easy choices through there in uh, Johan has only lost two shields though so uh, I mean it's this is not the end of the world at least not for now no I mean I think Position's actually pretty good. I certainly, not, uh, well, I, I, I don't think either of them's in a bad position, but I think, uh, I think uh, Johan's position is, is is pretty good right now, just based on where Zam is, vis-a-vis -vis the swarm and how stressed it is. Yep. Um, Sam has a good trajectory to to follow up on these uh, these inquisitors, and the inquisitors can't really turn in on him even though they want to yep. maybe the back ones but but still not not in a very good way well and it's going to break apart the swarm which makes the makes the uh mental lifting for um uh you know flying them a lot harder mm hmm But I don't think I'm gonna, um, you know, Nicholas is one of the best players out there, so he probably has a very good plan for this position. Decisions, decisions. And there's plenty of time left. I mean, uh, Sam could uh, turn to the right. Just try to overshoot the the green inquisitor. Shooting from the rear. I don't think. Yeah. Do you think the the, the group of inquisitors will commit to uh, Grievous or? Well. Mind games. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a tough one. It's it, that's certainly what you know what the expected move would be, which means my gut says <laughs> they won't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that as well. It's it's so easy to just go straight ahead here, but that it's it looks like such a bad choice. But then sometimes that makes it a good choice because your opponent <laughs> would never do something that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So it does that's the reason hard. why I win games every now and then. <laughs> Do you think that's the hard block? Um, I'll look at that. It's trying to block Grievous coming in uh, hard. Oh. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he's, lining that up, up. Uh, he's lining nice. up. He's um, lining up bullseye orcs here. I didn't Look see at that this. coming. This is just beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it 
looked complicated, and then when you see the answer, it just makes perfect sense. Uh, so there's the block. Block, which is not well. You don't really want to be standing in front of that rock, but uh, you don't get that many shots on it. But that's. Oh yeah, and well, <clears throat> he will just tractor himself away. That's one of the uh, one of the things about those Nantexes is they're, they're very slippery. Mm -hmm. Did you ever consider to add the fully execute when you were on the Nantex? Never. Never. I um, I mean, I considered it as a possibility, but I never wanted to do it because the identity of the ship is that it is resistant to blocking and that sort of like close in tactics. If you added fully execute, I don't think the Nantex would have anything going for it. <clears throat> no. So we just had one shield cool. taken off uh, Sam and John is revealing the card. It's the bonus attack when defending thing. I think you'll take the extra shot anyway. This is the second uh, foresight attack that's been yeah. cancelled there. Yeah, no, the, the Nantex was a very interesting ship on the design side, um, but uh, although we played around with a bunch of things, I, I knew that I wanted it to have some ability to maneuver even when blocked, um, uh, because that was design space we hadn't really played in yet. I think um, if I was, you know, to go back and do it over, I might look into changing how the cost of that worked or fiddling with the ability in some way. But um, the fundamental of it not being able to be blocked in a traditional sense, that I really like. Here we go. Hit, crit, crit. Burr, rolling natties. Yeah, huh? sometimes... Uh, Ooh. Spence is uh, focus. Oh, it was on... Yeah. I thought it was on the blue. Mm. Uh, that would have been, uh, been very bad for blue. So the brown took a shield. So it, it's interesting because in a lot of ways, both of these lists remind me quite a bit of first edition lists, and that they're both very defensively stacked. Um, but different from first edition uh, is that you know all of these ships do wear down over time to some degree. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Pulling a crit. There's a crit, Dooku crit call there, I think. Yep. Spent that well. Um, it's a good Dooku. Yeah. Yep. And that is... Takes, takes one. So uh, yep. that's half points on Brown. Half points, but no crits. No and crit he now. survived, I think. Yeah, well, Grievous as well coming up. So all three into one target, trying to get it off. Good roll on this turn. Absolutely, yep. getting everything. Uh, over over the long term, those dice rolls <laughs> even out. But the green dice are with Nicholas as well, so... Absolutely. Spence at fours for uh, three of eights. I think Nicholas was a little bit um, lucky here, having, having it still on the board. At least the last roll here was very good for him. Yeah, definitely. There's uh, two dice, two, two hits. Yeah. That's evaded. Hey, he takes his uh, second, you better be in business attack. Gets two. That's two in. There and it it's is. Gone. There it is. The so one inquisitor down. Uh, 
one hit spending target lock and spends force for oh spends focus for two and takes one still only the second shield so still in a good good health It's always so sad when the die just bounces off that crit face. <laughs> That's yep. it. Spending treacherous. Ah. I was really pleased to see treacherous show up in this list. That was a card I really enjoyed designing that I feel has taken a while to catch on. And it probably still wouldn't see a ton of play outside of hyperspace, but it's just such a thematic card. I'm always really happy when I see it used. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't seen it. Removing one damage here. Yeah. I really liked that the Republic had a lot of like, take strain to help your ally <laughs> effects, and then the Separatists got, give your ally a strain for your own benefit. It was definitely a fun design parallel to set up. And it also works on, on your enemy ships. Yes, it does. You don't get to do it very often, but when you do, it's awesome. I think we saw a situation where that happened yesterday, and, and that ship got attacked afterwards from nice. the one. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, it actually, I'm. Not, I don't remember if you could use it on allies or enemies when I first designed it. I think it might have been enemies only, and it turned out to be a little too limited, so we made it allies or enemies, which was thematically mm. fitting. But we liked the. I liked the idea of the separatists were always like taking hostages and such. So I liked the idea of like taking an enemy ship hostage by flying close to it. They really are the bad guys, aren't they? <laughs> they're they're designed to be the bad guys in universe, even right. They're created to be this this threat that <clears throat> gives Palpatine the you know political capital he needs. That's sort of why the character of General Grievous is so perfect, because he's actually pretty incompetent and not that dangerous, but he looks really <laughs> scary. Sure does. Yeah, he's very good at not dying. You got he's all this... Oh, sorry. Nice. I don't know, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that you got all this uh, knowledge about the, the, all the lore. Is it from, uh, from the role-playing? Uh, Definitely partly, yeah. yeah. Um... Uh, I mean, or are you, I, you know, a I, hardcore Star Wars fan from I, from the ground? I liked Star Wars when I got to FFG. I actually came on to work on Warhammer 40k roleplay, mm -hmm. um, uh, but we were starting Star Wars at the time, um, and so you know I liked Star Wars and I was excited to work on it. But it wasn't like a a like big deep passion of mine the way it is for many of my friends. But fortunately, I, I was able to deep dive on it and pick up a lot of that knowledge for the RPG and then expand that for X-wing. Um, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I definitely watched a lot of, uh, you know, watched a lot of Clone Wars for work, would sit down and be like, all right, this evening I need to get through this season because this ship shows up and I need to know how it works, or this weapon is in here and I need to know how to stat it in the RPG. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I got a confession to make. I still haven't watched, uh, Hol Holo Clone Wars. There's a lot of Clone Wars. Yeah. I... I feel like you can do a best of cut for Clone Wars and not miss too much. There are a lot of episodes that are not great. It's kind of slow in the beginning. I've started a few times because I I just I never watched it when I before I started playing X Wing, and then there's all these uh, references in 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 X Wing, so I thought, yeah, I should watch that. And uh, and then the start is just so slow and unengaging. I think, but. Yeah, I heard the... that. I heard that they, it was. Uh, I mean, a lot of people love it. So um... it, it definitely picks up the theme. The first couple seasons, 
are not as strong as the later ones. Although I think that there are like individual episodes, kind of like any you know, any like long running TV show. It changes a lot over its run. You know, mm-hmm. like a lot of you know actually sci fi shows in general tend to have this right. Like Star Trek, you know, like the early seasons of most Star Treks aren't that great, and then they sort of like pick up steam or like the early seasons of like Babylon five or whatever clone wars is just kind of similar. It's early seasons kind of slow. And then like it picks up steam later. And then occasionally you still get like a hilarious dud episode or arc <laughs> even late on. Um, but, uh, but it, by and large, it gets pretty good. So blue here managed to get a <clears throat> bubble block. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Blue doing work. It doesn't have many ships to follow up on good attacks, though. No, so, that is true. I guess Nicholas needed a round to, uh, to breathe. get his ships <laughs> back into action. <clears throat> but it's better to be shot at by non-modded shots than fully modded range one-shots. That is certainly true. Have we got any, <clears throat> any foresight bullseyes this turn? Probably not. Nope. Doesn't look like it. Sam will have shots. Sam's um, ability is uh, loaded as well, so... I've taken the... He will get a shot from green. Or will green shoot into pink the Nandex? He's going for yellow. <clears throat> Yellow's got fours and but but the result was uh, hit and double crits. So I can see one evade. Focus <clears throat> spent. Sam has so many ways to modify his uh, red dice, and uh, he's very quick with uh, modifying them. Um, I, I think Yuan has played Sam with this set of upgrades a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think this is also a match where it it pays to be... Uh, pays to be aggressive. I think that's often the case, but, you know, this one in particular, the... The thing about the Inquisitors is, although they are a swarm in many ways, like I feel like more than most swarms, each Inquisitor you lose really hurts your overall effectiveness because of the position advantage you lose with the ability to set up those bullseye shots. Yeah. Um, and the ability to like threaten bullseye shots, like more than a tie, sw- a traditional tie swarm or something, every piece you lose really hurts you. So let's see. This shot is going into Sam from. And his target lock on green. Rerolls both dice into two hits. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to spend his force because oh. of the potential revenge Ooh. shots. Oh, there's damage going in. Shield does Sam now. <clears throat> Reveals the card. It's the bonus attack. nothing nothing that you want to keep <laughs> that's a good i mean when you manage to strip two of uh, the charges of sam and do two damage in a round feels good yeah. um how much damage did yellow only took a single shield i think this was yep. uh, 
this round and was uh, very good for Nicholas. So... It, it looked a little bit bad when when only having a single arc on target, but still managing to get get more damage in than the new one here. So what uh, what sort of games do you play outside of uh, when when you're not working, Sam, um, Max? Uh, yeah, what do I play when I'm not working? Well, let's see. I try to, um, you know, unless I am deep diving in a game for work, I honestly find just because my time is limited, I try to play lots of different uh, games and different types of games. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know... For design inspiration, the more omnivorous you are in what you consume, the more interesting ideas you'll, you'll come across, you know? Um, so, of late, um, I played a bunch of Undaunted Normandy with a couple of friends, which is a, a great little deck builder, like, tactical game mm -hmm. that I think X-Wing fans would actually probably really dig. Um, uh, because it's got the feel of a minis game, but no, like, minis, no, you know, setup. And I think there's an official TTS mod for it, too. Oh, cool. Um, so if I can give that one a plug, that's that's been a really fun one. It's got a, a neat system for reflecting sort of like confusion in battle through this these like fog of war cards mm -hmm. that feel like interesting and not overly fiddly or annoying. Um, I also have been um, dipping a bit into um, uh, Unmatched, um, uh, the one the the restoration games uh, sort of soft remake of. Uh, Star Wars Epic Duels from the mm. early 2000s. Um, that's the one with like all the public domain fictional characters fighting each other. But it's <laughs> it's uh, it's an adaptation of um, Star Wars Epic Duels, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's got just a, a pretty neat battle system. And again, I think you know for X Wing players could be pretty appealing because it's got a very minis game feel, but doesn't have a lot of the like fiddliness of a traditional minis game that I know a lot of people in X Wing are. Are glad not to have. Not that X-wing can't be fiddly; it certainly can. I mean, there's plenty of charges on the board right now, but um, but not as many as we feared there might be at the beginning of Second Edition. Yeah. Um, and then let's see. Uh, in terms of video games, I just picked up and downloaded uh, a game called Gunfire Reborn, which is a roguelike shooter, which is pretty fun. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to try to try lots of different things though which is why i never get good at games anymore <laughs> <laughs> i play them enough times to understand them but not enough times to actually get good <laughs> see a uh, bomb drop here a thermal detonator do you get any uh, time to play any rpgs by the way Oh, RPGs? Yeah, definitely. So I, I just uh, started running a Star Wars role-playing campaign for some friends. I actually am going to come up with some rules for converting their characters into X-Wing pilots so we can mm. do one session as an X-Wing thing. If I uh, think I'm going to get those rules after I do that and test it out, I'm going to write those up and put them on my website. So Cool. Just, just like simple, like, <laughs> here's how you adjust your ranks in piloting into initiative or this, that, you know, how do you choose what ability you get? How do you determine your initiative, etc.? It's just real simple. Cool. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely need to try that. I think it'd be fun. I am, um, you know, obviously my a lot of my backgrounds in the Edge of the Empire and those RPGs, and I really mm -hmm. love those. Yeah. Let's see what's going on here now. This is the turn. This is the sort of turn that, in my experience, separates the really good players from uh, people like me who have played the game a lot but never got really good. Because this is the point in the game where I just have no idea what to do. I'm like, my plan has fallen apart. I don't know how to adapt. You know. <laughs> so we're still a damage away from half point on Sam. Um, we're quite a few. I mean, Grievous is seven health right so mm -hmm. we're two po two whole damage away from grievous at half point um time is there's half an hour left so uh, there's still time to get uh meaningful points here uh there's one inquisitor down on nicholas side 
and everything is pointed in a different direction from everything else. <laughs> yeah. For now, at least. For, yes, for now. We'll see. I'm, I'm excited to watch this. I mean, this is always really cool because good players, you know, as differentiated from myself, <laughs> can actually plan it out such to have their fire arc converge again on a particular turn on purpose. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's relatable. So Green will take the thermal detonator here. Yeah. I guess he Nicholas just decided that that was the best choice. Grievous entering the uh, kill box can't really get out here. Yeah, Grievous. Uh, Grievous is probably going to kill zone prime this turn. He'll survive. And oh. it's another bump. And very nice bump there. Well set up by. And that's uh, a bump as well. And here uh, we have a bullseye shot from red, maybe? I think so. Yeah, maybe it's hard to tell with that focus over it. I think oh, from red, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, that's a bump. He'll get to choose his attractor beam thing first. You could try to be in left and back and and switch your target to the blue inquisitor, couldn't you? Possibly. Yeah. I think that's Let's probably see. what he's gonna do. Let's see. Yeah. Hey. He's gonna hit that rock next yeah. turn. Kissing it. <laughs> oh, is that on Grievous or not? Uh, it does no not line. look like it. No, no line. This is the sort of thing where TTS is just, you know, lightning fast <laughs> compared to playing at the table. It would be like at least a minute to figure that out, right? Yeah. And not to talk about destroyed board states because of clumsy judge hands. Oh, <laughs> those were my clumsy judge hands. I, when they finally let me stop doing uh, doing judge calls, I was like, you've done the players such a service. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> I'm happy to make rules calls, but don't make me touch the table with my shaky hands. Uh, Blue gets out of it. This is Sam's shot. In the rear, wrench three through an obstacle. He's calling a Dooku, probably a crit. I can see Andreas Carlson is in the chat. Very well played, Andreas. So, <clears throat> Grievous on red. Only one. A bit cold ice here. <clears throat> Using the spinning the force to stay unharmed. Out of Grievous has not gotten to make those nice backstabs. He likes this game. <clears throat> Grievous has two shots incoming here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's... Oh no! He 
takes one, spends his focus. Of points. Red into Grievous, that's one crit. Yeah, Grievous that's is it. in the worst position here because both of these two are in his firing arc, so he's not mm. even getting Solus one. He's not running away or stabbing someone in the back. <laughs> But you want Grievous as he's, he's the straight jousting kind. He gets out. Do you think he'll, uh, Niklas will continue chasing Grievous here? His position is kind of awkward. Well, I don't know, to be honest. Um, hopefully, Nicholas knows, but. <laughs> I mean, with, with the Impervium uh, plating and Solus 1, Grievous has potentially a decent chunk of health. Yeah, Though it's same. that quantum uncertainty. Some of it is quantum uncertainty health with the Impervium plating. <laughs> Sam is getting away here. Uh, still got one hull over half. Yeah, I like that. Blue's coming around, trying to get uh, arc on, another arc on two Greaves. Yeah, so I think uh, Nicholas has decided to, to take it out. Sam are going to struggle for high quality shots this turn, right? So. Yes. Oh, there look at that. <clears throat> That's very, very nice. Well predicted. This is over rock. I mean, green yeah. takes a Burver. damage. But green and red still got shot on Berber there. Grievous has two shots incoming as well, unless they manage to kill Yellow, who's at three health left. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Sam has anything. Oh, she's turning up. And with Dooku to potentially boost that uh, Burrow shot, that's actually pretty good. I was wrong. Yeah, but um, he's he's tractored and in two arcs here without mods. I I, I think Berber has potential to take some serious damage here. I has a good chance he'll die, but he's gonna he's gonna. Well, depends. He's he's relying relying somewhat on good uh, good dice luck, but uh, he could do some real damage to yellow. Yep. Sam has a rare arc shot into the green inquisitor it's good time to call crit i guess yeah, spend his force for nothing oof yeah that f five dice on uh Focus is not uh, something you want to... Or five days on defense is not something you want to see. Yep. It's crit. Pretty good. Still evade and force. Yep, takes nothing. Now 
let's see. Grievous into the green, which is tokenless and it's got no force. And yeah, you know, green actually has has an evade actually. Oh yeah. Yep. But Grievous got rerolls. But gets four. Now that's the nice thing about Grievous. He loves stabbing people in the back. Oh yeah. Oh, gets yeah, everything yeah. he needs. Still takes a crit, One but shield. that's only only in the shields. Yeah. Nicholas gets uh, some good rolls this round. That was a, a great grievous move though, because it put him in his get his offensive rerolls and get his defensive rerolls position, which is what you want. Mm. The blue doesn't manage to do any damage on Grievous. But the yellow does. Grievous at two hull left. Hit crit into Berber. Perfect deflection, yeah. Ooh. Six one, crit. And crits on the Nantex are quite painful. He used Treacherous again. Ah. Well played. It was obstructed by that guy, wasn't it? Yep, yep. I keep forgetting it. <laughs> Two. But if nothing else, this game has made me really happy to see this good treacherous play because I really like that card, and I always enjoy making seeing people uh, really make it sing. See, we have uh, <clears throat> one. Was that one damage on uh, Sam? Yep. So yep. we have half damage on Sam as well. And that takes Nicholas to the lead, actually. Yep. And uh, you should thank me, Triggers on Sam, so she gets a, a charge back and a target lock onto the green uh, Inquisitor. So... Yeah, I think... <clears throat> Sorry. Very good uh, dice this round and, and managed to just uh, get out and, and, and get the damage, a little bit of the damage he needs. And... You know, Sam is in a spot where <clears throat> he, he needs to he needs to decide if he's turning left or right. You have to go right here. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Let's see. Maybe. No, I, I think he has to go right. Maybe you even do the uh, the talent roll here. Yep, that's true. I think I think that's the best one. You'll you'll get uh, an arc on the enemy as well. Mm. But there might be a few uh, foresight triggering here. Exciting. What's the point score right now? Uh, it is <clears throat> seventy-eight points to Niklas and sixty points to Joel. Yeah, close. And only twelve minutes to go. We we uh, joked about. Uh, the game being very 
it could go anyway in the last match with Oli, but uh, this time we we can say it with uh, without without choking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's an interesting one too. It's close in point score and in in table state, right? Because sometimes you have a game that doesn't, you know, it's not close in point score, but if one ship loses one hull, it becomes close in point score immediately. But this one, you know, is close in point score and game state. Absolutely. Okay, Zam is completely out of bombs. I was trying to remember if uh, Zam had saved <laughs> one surprise bomb for the end game. <laughs> oh, and we are about 11 minutes left of the game. It's all coming down to... I think... Do you think we get another round after this? Yeah? I don't think... Yeah, I think so. Probably. Depends what happens in this round, yeah. to some extent. Sam has a target lock on the green, so I think I think maybe Nicholas don't want to present the green one as an option. But uh, what do you do to prevent that for, from happening? Perhaps go downwards. Yeah. Or, or put it somewhere that makes Zam move where you want Zam, right? Yep. If you, if you can capitalize on that. Going three bank hard forward, I maybe it's maybe it's to play. I think he will do the talent roll, and that, so that, yeah. in that case, it would be would be bad. If it doesn't make the take the barrel, it's it's the one hard, and then a boost to get arc on something. All right, let's see what happens. The blue turns in. Boost focus. Hmm. <clears throat> Almost touching that rock. <laughs> and for K for you. We're very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's very exciting here. Yeah, I hear a pin drop. I just want to know what, what Sam is going to do. Oh, I think what's going on here. Perhaps you barrel behind the rock. Try to get. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Let, now we have an, a foresight shot here uh, from green, I think. Maybe. There are some hands. There are many hands on the table. This is a four shot side shot onto her getting a hit. It's five minutes mm. now, Simon. Yes. Let's just keep it as it is. We'll, uh, the table time is going to trump the 
the overlay time. So uh, that's half point on Berber. That is quite big. So I think it's... Uh, Nicholas is in a good position now. He's gotten lots of half damage on all three of the ships. Let's see what he can do. There's a bullseye shot from uh, Berber into the yellow Inquisitor. Just a single. Ooh. That strain pays off. Yeah. Yeah, it was just range two as well, so there's only two dice and getting nothing. So yellow is at half as well. Yeah. Even Sack Sam range two into the red Inquisitor. The red Inquisitor is at full health. Single hit. Turns into crit with Dooku, I guess. Yeah, it must be. Uh, gets three focus, which turns into evades. But burns that focus off. Yep. Grievous cannot follow up. Have to shoot into the green, which is almost dead. But oh, gets all four. This is important. This is important. He has both both an evade and a force, but needs all three. And he gets it. Evade force, natural evade, takes one and lives. <laughs> that is quite huge. That would have been um, final salvo, otherwise. 100. I don't think we're finished here. No. Oh, I'm just worked up about the <laughs> technical issues. <laughs> That's fine. We're we're back. So Simon, uh, the, the blue one has two choices. Yeah. Hit crit into Sam. Let's hit crit. Into Sam. This is starting to look a little bit uh, dangerous for uh, Yuan. Oh, very much so. It's a disabled power regulator. Takes nine. Doesn't matter too much now. Three hull left on Sam. Triggers his condition. Her condition. Which is the charge up and target lock. Uh, so it moves the target lock to the blue Inquisitor. I have been very impressed with the positioning of Zam this game. Uh, a lot of turns where Zam, you know, with just a little bit, a little bit less careful flying would have taken a lot more shots. Absolutely. Two hits into Grievous, rerolls one, gets nothing, takes two, and that's five, and... He's gone. It's the end of General Grievous. Uh, that's the game. I think that's the game. It's just a few seconds there. left on the clock. Yeah. And who could have foreseen that Nicholas God would be the winner of this tournament? <laughs> it seems so so random. <laughs> yeah, you'd, you'd need quite a bit of uh, of foresight to call that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Been waiting for that the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, and that's time. So the last shots will go. 
And can shoot into uh, Berber? Yeah. Yeah, he has do. a chance to kill Berber. Can modify it for free, doesn't do that. No. Doesn't really matter. So we have a new winner. Yeah, congratulations, Niklas. And very well played, Johan. It's well, amazing. And <clears throat> both first and the second place to Swedish uh, players in the Swedish Open. Uh, we have had 87 players. We have had uh, six games of Swiss and then a top 16. So, um, yeah, this is. Uh, I'm 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 lost for words now. But <laughs> it's been a it's been a really journey. Thank you so much, Flipster. Thank you, uh, uh, Max, for coming on both uh, yesterday and today. It has been an honor to have you on. Thank you, everybody's been watching, and I would like to thank our sponsors, Alora Games. Uh, and uh, Drinus Art in Kogo 2. Uh, please have a look in the show notes and click the links. Uh, there are also links for all the commentators' uh, blogs and uh, podcasts and everything. Uh, but now I would just like to thank the audience. And uh, I think we should close this stream down so I can go and talk I just to want the to say one oh, thing, yeah, uh, sure. Simon. Um, uh, on behalf of all the players, uh, uh, not that I'm a player, but I do it anyway. Uh, thank you for uh, setting up this amazing uh, tournament. I ah, did really so... nothing compared to the job you have done uh, the last uh, weeks here. So uh, well done, uh, and uh, thank you very much. It's yeah, been so run. much fun. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, over and out. Oh, my God. <laughs>